I didn't realize how great the audio batch converter is in Studio One. So this is for you if you are a Studio One Plus member or if you've purchased the audio batch converter as an add-on. It's included with your subscription if you're in Studio One Plus. Here's Studio One, right? Here's the, the home page, right? This is where we live. We hardly ever even look over here in this corner. But there's this thing right here. If you hover over it, it tells you that this is an audio batch converter. Now, not the most exciting of names, but it's a really cool utility inside of Studio One. I'm going to show you a couple of things that I discovered that I didn't realize were there until like this morning, and it <laughs> made me really happy. So if you click on this, it opens up this window. And this window, this is, as the, as the name implies, this is designed to help you convert audio files. It's an audio batch converter. There have, if you've ever had to take like your WAV files from a project and you want to turn them into MP3s to send to friends and family, I remember years ago, the only way I knew or discovered how to do that was to bring them into iTunes and you could right click and convert to MP3, but you had to make sure you had the setting right in preferences because it would convert it to whatever the setting was set to and it could sound terrible if you didn't do it right. Anyway, I, I wish there were tools like this when I had to do that because it makes sense if you're making all your music in Studio One, of course you're going to like do some file conversion in Studio One as well. Of course, that makes sense. So I want to show you a couple of things that I discovered that you can do here uh, in the audio batch converter. The first one, and the one that I've used for a long time, is it allows you to check your files and to check the, the, the bit depth specifically of audio files. So recently, I had a client send me a song to do a mix critique for. And when I, depending on how they send it to you and the file format that you have, Sometimes I, the, one of the, the mistakes that people make, and there's another video here on the channel you can go watch about uh, MP3 export mistakes, but the, one of the mistakes people make is they set the bit rate too low. They don't, they don't maybe realize what it does or how important it is, so they'll set it pretty low. So this client sent me a song to critique, and as soon as I started listening, I thought, this feels, it feels a little lower quality, like the high frequencies are a little wonky. And so I dragged it here, and I can immediately see it is an MP3, 48K, 160 kilobits per second. That's not terrible. 128 is terrible. 160 can be passable. That used to be like the best you could get. Um, but 320 is really where I live now. You can really hear a difference between these two. It has to do with the amount of data compression. and it, Don't worry about that. Just know, set it to 320. We live in a world where a 10 megabyte file is fine. Right? We're not worried about bandwidth for the most part. So it is worth any extra bandwidth because this sounds fantastic. This can sound really bad. So this is where I go when I want to check to see the bit depth on something. You can occasionally select an MP3 and do the command I and check the info of the file. And sometimes in that little window that pops up, it'll tell you the bit depth, but sometimes it doesn't. And I don't know what the variable is, but Studio One will do it every time. So you drag it in. And it will tell you what it is. So that's the first thing. If you just want to know, like, what is what is this MP3? What what's the what's the bit depth of it? You can drag it in here to find out. That's pretty helpful. The other thing that it will do that I did not realize is it has this box right here that says show peak slash RMS slash R128. What does that mean? It means loudness. So if I want to take like these files here, I can delete these. Let's take uh, I've got the wave files here for my Amen EP. And I drop it in, and Studio One will go in and analyze and let me know the peak value, the true peak value, I don't know the difference there, the average level, and then the LUFS value. It has them all right there. So if you've got a bunch of files, you just want to double check what the volume is. Here's what I normally do. When I have a track and I'm trying to figure out, hey, what's the LUFS value here? How loud is it? Just it Maybe it sounds too loud, but I'm not entirely sure. What I usually do is I open up a new project in Studio One and hit the measure loudness button. That's fine. That's nice to have if you're doing a proper mastering session. But just to check files, I realized I can do it right here. I just drag them in and check this box, and it takes just a second to measure everything. And now I've got all the measurements right here. That's pretty cool. And finally, this can be used to actually convert files. So if you have a bunch of WAV files you want to convert to MP3, you can do that here. You drag everything in here. You set all your settings down here. And you can have all kinds. You can convert to Og Vorbis, Opus, Flack, whatever you want to do. Uh, but it's an easy way. If you really want to have your, your album in every format possible, drag the full resolution wave masters here, and then you can come in and do this here. You can do this from the project page, right? You can export different formats. But let's say you didn't master it, but someone else did and they sent you the WAV files back. Well, now you can do a lot of these conversions. You're not relying on the mastering engineer to do all of that for you. You can do it all here. Um, or if you mastered it 
and you forgot to check the boxes and you don't want to open it back up and re-render everything because that takes more time, you can do it here. And you just drop it in, tell it what you want to do, where you want it to go, set all the variables. You can even change sample rates, like the whole deal right here within Studio One without actually, actually having to technically open up the a song or a project. That's pretty cool. It also has these processes. I've not messed with these, but it's got some stuff for D-Clicker, for removing DC offset, for repairing sample rate. I don't even know what that is. Smarter people than I probably do, but you don't have to know what these do to get some benefit out of this audio batch converter, namely the things that I showed you in this video. Again, if you're a Studio One Plus subscriber, this is included with your subscription. Uh, if not, I believe this is something you can purchase in addition to owning Studio One, but it's a great tool. I'm glad it's there.